Deoxyribose is kind of like the glue of the uh, DNA molecule. And here we see that it's, uh, it's con connected to uh, three different places in the DNA molecule. This is our deoxyribose schematic. And we see here that it's connected to a base pair. And then it's also connected to two phosphodiester bonds, one above it and one below it. And this is true of, of the entire backbone and all the deoxyriboses in the backbone. So um, to figure out how uh, deoxyribose connects to um, the DNA molecule, we have to have a way of finding our way around the molecule. And um, scientists have uh, figured out a, um, a numbering system for the carbons in deoxyribose. And here's a diagram. I, I think it was taken from Wikipedia. And it shows how the carbons in deoxyribose are numbered. And we see here that uh, we start with 5. And 5, carbon number 5, is outside the pentagon. So that's kind of a uh, contradictory thought. And so just remember 5 is outside the pentagon. And then uh, you just number down 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So these are the carbons. And we can uh, look here at our ball and stick model and, and see what the corresponding uh, relationships are. This would be number 5 because it's outside. 4, 3, 2, 1. So that's how you get around on the uh, deoxyribose molecule. So let's move this over here and uh, compare it to what we've got in the diagram. So um, let's uh, turn this around like so. And now we can see that the oxygen is lined up here. You may remember how these uh, schematics work. Um, when you come to a, um, an end of a segment, that corresponds to a carbon, unless it's noted otherwise. So that's a carbon there, and it relates to this nitrogen. And this carbon relates to this carbon. This is carbon number one, because this is five over here. So uh, this carbon is going to go off to this nitrogen. But here we show it as going to an oxygen and a hydrogen. So we got to get rid of those. So um, we'll get rid of that, we'll get rid of that, and we'll get rid of that. We're going to, however, leave this uh, bond here because that's going to connect to this nitrogen. Um, as you recall, when we were working on the base pairs, we had a, a hydrogen bond coming off of this nitrogen, and we took it away because this is going to be the connection point with the deoxyribose on the backbone. And sure enough, there is the bond that goes to the carbon in the deoxyribose. So um, that takes care of our connection to the base pair. What else do we connect to? Well, let's see. That's carbon number one, two, three. Carbon number three connects to an oxygen in the phosphodiester bond. So let's go get our phosphodiester bond just for references. And we'll bring this over, like so. So what do we see here? We see that uh, this is carbon number 3, which is right here. And it goes to an oxygen, which goes to the phosphodiester. And that must mean it goes to uh, this oxygen. Well, it could go to this one and this one. But we'll just say for the sake of argument, it goes to this one, because it doesn't really matter. OK, so um, we got to get rid of this uh, oxygen right there because it's a duplicate. It's a redundancy. So we'll just go in there. Whoops, going too far. And there. So uh, now, once again, we have this bond that's free-floating on our deoxyribose molecule. And that will connect to the, um, the phosphodiester. All right, well, we have one more connection, which is over here. Um, let's see, this was carbon number 3, 4, and Every end of a segment, or a corner, or a kink counts as a carbon, unless noted otherwise. So this is a carbon. This is number 5. This is carbon number 5 right there, right there, right there. And we see that it goes to an oxygen in a phosphodiester bond. And once again, we have this situation where uh, we already have an oxygen there. So we're going to have to get rid of it, because it's. Uh, we're going to put this one in its place. Well, we're going to have another phosphodiester bond down here. Uh, so let's go in there, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. OK, so now we have our um, deoxyribose molecule. And we're going to move it over here like so. 
for reference purposes because uh, we, we see that we have a um, our base pair here connected to a nitrogen going over here to the deoxyribose and then we have a phosphodiester up here and we're only going to include one for linkage because uh, if we can get one to link um, then there's one down here that is associated with this deoxyribose so that it's like there's only one phosphodiester bond per uh, deoxyribose even though the deoxyribose connects to two ph phosphodiester bonds so we'll move this over here we'll move this over here like so uh, put it up there like that now what do we have here well we, we've got our deoxyribose molecule and it's integrated with a base pair and a phosphodiester uh, bond and another bond will be coming up like so and we'll worry about this side later but at any rate now we see how the um, the uh, fought, uh, I'm sorry deoxyribose molecule uh, integrates into the DNA structure and as far as connecting these things well that's the next video